Hello and welcome to series six of In Suspense, a podcast and vodcast for fans and writers of crime fiction and in our new series of minisodes with author and editor Phoebe Morgan. Phoebe Morgan is a best-selling author and award-winning editor. She studied English at Leeds University after growing up in the Suffolk countryside. She has previously worked as a journalist and now edits commercial fiction for a publishing house during the day and writes her own books in the evenings. She lives in London and you can follow her on Twitter, Instagram at Phoebe Ann Morgan, Facebook at Phoebe Morgan Author, or find her blog about publishing and writing, which is really good, by the way, at www.phoebemorganauthor.com. And we'll put all those details on the on the um, site for you. We'll list it on the on the website. Um, <clears throat> her books have sold over 225,000 copies and been translated into 10 languages, including French, Italian, Norwegian, Polish and Croatian. Her new thriller, The Wild Girls, will be published by William Morrow in the US. Her books are also on sale in Canada and Australia. Phoebe has also contributed short stories to Afraid of the Light, a 2020 crime writing anthology with proceeds going to the Samaritans, Noir from the Bar, a crime collection with proceeds going to the NHS, and Afraid of the Christmas Lights, with all profits going to domestic abuse charities. Her four thrillers can be read in any order, and uh, her next book, The Trip, will publish in February 2023. And you can find links to buy Phoebe's books in the description of the podcast and on our YouTube channel. Yes, I won't forget to do that. <laughs> um, so as before, um, each episode will be around, uh, each mini-sode, I should say, will be around 10 minutes long, and we'll focus on different aspects of the editing process. So without further ado, let's um, crack on with the lovely Phoebe Morgan. Thank you. Hello, Phoebe, and welcome to our third mini-sode, which today is all about the saggy middle. I think I've got one myself, actually. <laughs> another topic. Um, so many <laughs> authors struggle with the middle of their novels and it's probably I think because it's the longest section isn't it often about you know mm. 40 to 50,000 words depending on how long your your novel is. Um, so before we start you know asking you questions about that I think it's probably best that we try and define saggy middle. So Phoebe how would you describe this part? Oh, it's a very good question. I'm glad we're talking about it because I think it's something that actually isn't talked about very much. I don't hear it come up in many podcasts or interviews. Uh, I would say, like you said, the, the middle is really once. So I think a lot of the time the beginning or people perceive the beginning to be the first couple of chapters because that's what you send off to an agent when you're trying to get representation. And it's what an editor might read to begin with. Um, and so you've got your beginning. And I think there's so much focus that goes into making that beginning as brilliant and zingy and action packed as you can as a writer. And there's so much emphasis that the industry places on beginnings that then there's, there's not enough sort of time given to the middle and I suppose you're right it's that sort of section that 40 percent 50 percent in in the middle of your novel where actually you've set everything up your characters are sort of in play and they're in place and they're in their location and then it's about what happens to get them from a to b and endings are hard as well but that's a sort of different topic and it's not the part where you're tying everything up it's the part where you're actually sort of tread you know, sort of trudging through the story. And I think it can sag because people think actually, well, there's, there's a couple of reasons. I think one of them is just the, the practicality of it, as in when you're writing, you get this burst of creativity and energy at the start of your book. And then you get to sort of 40,000 words, 30,000 words, and it starts to feel really hard. I'm sure you both know exactly what I mean. And then at the ending, you can see the finish line and it gets easy again. And then you know you've got this whole chunk in the middle where it really does become like a job and you have to force yourself to sit down and get through the words and you can go back and polish it later um and yeah it does it does often sag because you haven't always got that sense of propulsion that you've got at the start and the end and so I suppose what we'll talk about is is how not to make it sag <laughs> yes I suppose I was going to also ask what in your opinion are the most common flaws that you tend to find in the middle of novels I think it is a lack of pace and I think I work in commercial crime fiction so pace is just so important and it's that sensation of keeping the reader on the edge of their seat keeping them literally turning the pages and I do sometimes find that you get a couple of chapters in and that pace just seems to really 
disappear or slow and it might be that the author is starting to sound a little bit repetitive um, which is really easily fixable in an edit but yeah it, I think that comes up quite a lot we're sort of told information that maybe we already know really or we're just sort of not moving on quickly enough when it comes to scenes and it feels as though there are scenes sometimes in the middle of a novel that that don't really need to be there and I think it's always about asking yourself what does this scene add to the novel what does it do does it does it develop our understanding of a character does it introduce a new plot point does it drive the book forward and if it doesn't you have to have an honest conversation with yourself about whether it's actually needed because I think if you have too many scenes like that especially in the middle you do run the risk of the reader losing interest um, and I think it's also important to make sure that you're always keeping your eyes on the prize as it were so keeping the end goal in mind and making sure that the middle is building towards that ending and that the ending doesn't come completely left field out of nowhere and I think I see that as well sometimes you'll get a middle which is maybe sort of trucking along nicely and then the ending just doesn't match the middle at all so it's sort of about making sure that the middle is pacey but also that it makes sense in the context of the start and the finish um, which is definitely not an easy thing to do. I think that's really great advice. Um, I I was writing Safe at Home and I don't, I don't know where I heard the advice from, if it was a podcast or if someone said it to me, but it was really great, which was all about making sure that your character is driving the story and it's not just your character having things happen to them and then reacting to it, which I thought was really good points. I always try and think about that as well. As you say, what can we do to be moving the story forward? So that's yeah, that's really, really good, good advice. advice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it is always the halfway mark. And I know this because I'm exactly halfway through my novel right now. I've just hit 35. I'm, I'm 39,000 words now, but I'm halfway. And I've got this other great idea. I really don't know if this book's working. And I just, even though I've been here before, I just want to throw it away and think, no, I'm going to do something else. Um, and I think that's a really common feeling. And I just wondered, um, have you got any tips you can give us to sort of avoid that saggy middle and avoid sort of feeling that way and to keep moving it forward? Mm. Well, I think what I mentioned before is in terms of it not having to be linear in your process. So maybe mm. you get to the middle and you get to like 30, 40K and you think, oh God, I just really don't know what's going to happen next. Or you've actually kind of lost the energy for your own story. And so it's maybe worthwhile if you know what's going to happen at the end you could write a scene from the ending um, or you could even write a scene which has nothing to do with the book at all so maybe if there's a character that you're struggling with you could write just a little set piece about that character in a separate word document like just something to kind of spark your imagination and I think sometimes it's just about reminding yourself that you do know how to write and that you can write because it's really easy to lose that momentum halfway through and I've definitely had points where you know I've got to that stage and thought actually this book is rubbish and it's, it's not working and I actually just cannot see my way to getting to 90,000 words but if you go away and sort of do something else and keep it writing related it might just give you that sort of sense of purpose back a little bit um so I've sometimes yeah recommended doing that to writers um and I think not panicking even though it sounds easier said than done but just not letting the idea of this particular story overwhelm you and if if you have done it before reminding yourself that you've done it before that you've got to the end of a book before and that you will be able to do it again um and you know if it's really really not working then then go away and do something else for a bit you know go and go and be in the outside world go and take inspiration from the outside world and remind yourself why you're writing in the first place and, and keep that love of writing because it can be easy to kind of feel like you're losing the love of it when you're in the sort of trenches of the novel at 30, 40k. Um, but yeah, I think it's keeping it in perspective and, and not being afraid to just jump around a little bit. Um, I also find going and reading a novel that I really love can sometimes help and that can, you know, make you realise that, and also listening to podcasts, you know, hearing about other writers' experience can hopefully make you realise that you're not alone and remind you, yeah, why you're doing it in the first place. I think that's really important. And I do feel like so many writers don't, you know, some people don't ever finish their novels and they don't get published. And, and some of that is because they've given up, you know, without sounding too, without sounding too harsh. It, and it is easy to give up. And I see why people do. But if you want to be a published writer, you, you really can't. And you have got to push through and find a way to sort of reinvigorate your story. Um, so, yeah, hopefully those tips help a little bit. They're really useful. Thank you. Yeah, really good. 
Well, sadly, Phoebe, that's all we've got time for today. Um, thank you for listening to our minisode with author and editor Phoebe Morgan. And thank you, Phoebe, for sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you. Yes, um, and if you've enjoyed this mini so do remember to check out uh, Phoebe's full episode, which is Series 5, Episode 7 on Location, Location, Location. But for now, um, it's say, time to say goodbye um, from Phoebe. Goodbye Bye, from Leslie you. and goodbye Bye. from me. Bye.